<laughs> yes, we hear you. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's our Good evening, episode. everybody. So, welcome to Bad Trip with Julia and Vida. Hello. Hi, everybody. So, and guys, thank you so much for everybody, ano, sa lahat ng nanonood. Thank you for, ano, thank, and we are also live, guys, ha? We have watch parties in Philvan, DVA, and VA Davao. So, sa mga ka-VA nat natin dyan na nanonood ngayon, thank you for watching, and good evening to everybody. Hello, mga ka-VA. So, we have a special guest ulit ngayon. Uh, we'll be talking about blogging, how to start, how do you earn from it, and how do you become an influencer. So, itong ating, uh, itong ating guest ngayon is a very good friend of mine. I still remember when she started her blog. And nakapaglibot na rin siya ng, uh, ng Asha. <laughs> Dahil sa kanyang blog, o di ba? At dahil sa kanyang pagiging influencer. So, uh, I'll let her explain it to you further. So, let us welcome... Uy, huwag mo ko pagali. Huwag mo kawayin mamaya kasi yung pangat yung production ko. <laughs> okay, maganda ako na. <laughs> kasi maganda siya. So, here is our special guest for tonight, Miss Kathy Kenningo of uh, Life is Cool A Full, her blog, and content manager of B Live TV. Yay! By the way, Thanks. guys, we're using B Live TV right now. Oh, oh. Like, and thank you, Miss Kenny, for introducing us to Be Live. So, Super kali niya gamitin. Yon. Uh -huh. So, hey guys. Okay. Okay, na natin pumasok si Miss Kenny. Papasok na yan. Tada. Iti Queen Walk. Hey, Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Miss Kenny. Good Hi. evening. Hi, Kenny. Hey, I bought your intro. I'm sorry. I owe you. Yes, fine. I heard you naman, actually. And it was all good. It was all good. We're still friends, even after the show. <laughs> but, um, Ay, dapat lang. Wala magbibigay ko ng cookies Christmas. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having um, BeLive.TV and testing us out. We hope that you love all our features and how it just makes everything so much easier for you guys. And Yes, I am a blogger. I have been blogging for 13 years now and I have been blessed enough to have gone around Asia and attended a lot of events and it has brought so much joy in my life, which I hope to share with you guys. Oh, wow. I, so since you mentioned, Miss Kenny, that you've been blogging for 13 years, so how, how, did, you get, how did you get started in blogging? Actually, uh, the story of my starting with blogging was purely out of laziness. Um, so I had a kid 13 years ago, and since my son was the first baby in his generation, so to speak, everyone wanted updates. And I got so tired of answering emails, because you have to remember, this was 13 years ago. Facebook was not a thing. It was mostly emails. I got so sick and tired of answering emails over and over again. And someone said, you know, there's an yes, online there's an online journal and um, you can just and you can just actually update there and let people know what's happening. So I started the blog and it was mostly my son. I was updating the world about him. And then eventually it it sprung out to something else. It became about arts and crafts, it became about travel, it became about relationships. So it's all very organic. I did not mean to be a blogger. It was not an intent. It was just, I, I was lazy. I love writing, um, but not <laughs> updating people. So it became a blog. Oh, yeah. I remember all those notebooks you left at, I know, for me. No, I was <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> She's a very patient journaling, a, a journalist. As in, ako, I quit journaling around 
ano around college na mahirap eh every day talaga ah uh, oo naka nakakatamad eventually especially kung walang nangyari today <laughs> That's true. That's why you have washi tapes and other decorations. Uh, oh, oh. I wish we had ano, parang washi tape and stick. I we wish I had that idea nung ano when I was in college that would have made sure that it's a bit more fun. Sayang mo nga no. okay. So, can you tell us uh, more about your niche? Uh, ano yung mga sinasabi nilang ano, technology or uh, travel, lifestyle, so, uh, there, ano pa bang mga, anong, anong mga niche ang meron sa mundo ng blogging? Okay, well in blogging, there are a lot of different niche. Now, we also have people who cover everything. Um, they're kind of the, parang a bit of everything, ja- uh, jack of all trades but there are also very specific um bloggers like they do travel lifestyle makeup parenting health relationships and tech blogging so you just have to find your niche when you do blogging because you may have a smaller audience but then they're more loyal to you now for the others if they don't know yet what they want i'd suggest trying out everything because then you can easily filter Ano yung hindi mo gusto? What you don't like? So, for example, I tried a little bit of tech blogging before. And I've come to realize that it's really not my thing. Because I can't, I can't review phones over and over and over and over again. There's just a specific brand that I like or specific type that I like. So, it's unfair mm-hmm. to my readers if I keep doing the same thing but my heart is not in it. That's one thing kasi about blogging. Your heart has to be in it. Your passion has to be um, existent. You can't just, you know, pull blogger or WordPress. Just blogger na ako and that's good enough. It 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 can only hold you so much. And then eventually, people will see that your heart is not in it. Your writing is not really good. And they will stop reading. Then you become irrelevant. So basically, mm-hmm. it's authenticity that keeps your readers coming back to you. Um, I would love to think that yes, it's authenticity. I guess they also um, following before my very um, crazy um, love stories, and then my love for food because I love food. I started writing a lot about food, and apparently people can relate to how I would describe food because I don't use highfalutin words. I don't use fancy terms. I'm just very real. Like if the food is good, I'd say things like I can eat ten cups of rice with this. Which unfortunately is <laughs> true. <laughs> but, uh, pero, diba, that's that's a great thing about blogging is you actually, you're you're sharing your you're sharing your passion and you're sharing you know, parts of your life that you want to share. Pero mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to imagine. How do you start, you know, earning from blogging? Blogging. How 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 does it become a source of income, Mom Kenny? Okay, for blogging, vlogging, live streaming. Um, uh, any video marketing, for it to become a source of income, you need to first invest. So a lot of people kasi think, oh, I'm a freelancer. I don't really need to do much. I just want to do social media. But no, you have to invest. When I say invest, what does that mean? You need to read up on new things. You need to keep um, learning new things. Uh, social media platforms have so many updates. That if you're not on top of everything, you can easily lose um, lose traction. So, for example, about Facebook, it changes algorithms all the time, but mm-hmm. it does send out a reminder, a note. A lot of people don't um, pay attention to it. There are rules in terms of publication, so you need to invest time in reading these things, learning from it, so that you know how to navigate. Kumbaga, know the rules so that you also know how to break them properly. Um, know the updates so that when you actually meet another social media person, another freelancer, another blogger, live streamer, video marketer, you can actually have a conversation, learn from them, and put something on the table. So that's one, invest. Pangalawa, you really need to be patient because it doesn't happen overnight. It is very rare that it happens overnight. Most of the time, it's a lot of hard work and then luck happens 
and then you become a sensation and you become known you become you go viral or you have an article that people just kept sharing and sharing and then people will notice you but you can't expect that i'm gonna get a blog i'm gonna um, post for shoots and then i'm gonna be a sensation already it doesn't happen that way third is you need to have passion you need to love what you're doing because blogging is a lot of hard work it is hard work pwedeng... this was surprising eh, diba? that's what people don't realize people <laughs> think that the content. <laughs> exactly people think that you can just uh post something and that's it if i have great content okay na yan no, it's not. If you have great content, that's only 20% of the actual mm -hmm. work. The 80%, that's you syndicating your posts, sharing it on social media, telling people about it, repurposing your content, sharing it over and over again in different timestamps because you have to figure out when do your audiences visit your page? When do they come to your Facebook page? When do they come to your shows? And then you need to establish a time. You need to let people know, okay, I'll be uploading new content at this time. I'll be doing my live stream at this time. So there's a lot of small things that actually work together to make you uh, an effective blogger, an effective live streamer, an effective marketer. There's a lot of small things involved. It can't just be, I have great content, I have great ideas, and that's it. Sana uh -oh. it works that way, but it doesn't. Uh oh. Okay, uh -oh. before this episode, ano, ano, ilang, ano, ilang oras, ilang minutes, <laughs> ginug Google natin para mag-prepare. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And it doesn't, and it doesn't end with your stream, diba? After your oh, stream, no. you need to no. tell other people who were not able to catch it because, you know, they could be in other commitments. You need to make sure that your replay customers, your replay viewers, will know that hey we have awesome content you have to watch it you missed this but guess what we have this on on facebook and you can still catch it you have okay. to tell people pa afterwards and then hindi din pwedeng, after today it's done tomorrow you need to tell mm -hmm. people about it next week next month why because it could be relevant to them and you want to make sure that anyone searching for say how to earn money from freelancing this show will pop up on their screen Wait, oh, okay. we just have a message here from, or we have a post from Irene and Rikas Chan. I'm also a B-liver? Believer. Yes, B-liver. B-liver, yeah. Hi, and she used, hi, Irene. And she used to be a blogger. Yep, she's a tech blogger before. One of the best. Oh, you know her. <laughs> I, it's yeah. a small community. It's a small yeah. community. Nice. So I understand. I mean, you made me do events. You made me do events before. You made, but I, you made me. Okay. I am first. So, yes. She forced me. Ako yung kanyang North Girl. Kasi kailangan niya ng, <laughs> kailangan niya ng, ng ano, taga Norte ng Metro Manila. Na. I... <laughs> so. Uh, but I noticed during those events na karamihan ng mga bloggers na nakikita ko, na namimit ko, hindi lang ito yung, ano, yung, hindi lang yung blogging nila, yung source of income nila. So how does blogging lead to other, uh, other streams of income? And how do you earn from being a blogger? How does it start, ma? Okay, well, kasi blogging, it's kind of a, a stepping stone or a stepping point for a lot of people. So mostly you write, right? Um, so you write your content and then people share it. People find out about it. It becomes a source of income when you start getting sponsors. So somebody will reach out to you. Hey, we love your content. Can you create something for us? Um, we'd love to be featured on your site. So that's one way they get featured on your site. Another way is... You could have written something relevant to another niche and they want to insert a link to their site on your blog. So that's also another form for you to earn money. Another is if uh, brands actually notice you and they feel like you're a perfect fit for them, then they get you as an influencer, as an ambassador, or they just get you as part of a campaign. That's where you see some influencers, they talk about products. 
they push products to their audiences. So that's another way for you to earn money from blogging. So it's not just you writing about them, but also in a way becoming a marketing machine for brands and other sites. So that's for blogging. But then if you get lucky, you also get invited overseas. And then they pay for that and you have an allowance and then you get paid for the work that you did. So there's a lot of uh, springboard, so to speak, when it comes to blogging. And since blogging has evolved, it's not just blogging anymore. You can't just be a blogger nowadays. You also need to be mm -hmm. a vlogger wherein you do videos. Now for others who have apparently uh, no talent in editing, then they become a live streamer because all they have to do is set up a webcam camera, lights, hit live, and then they can start talking. Now that's where um, my work with BeLive comes in because we make those things easier for the live streamers. You can have what we have here right now, very um, professional looking uh, setup, but it's all just with one tool. So that's our that's our goal. Because wouldn't people- And how many want clicks? To, yes, wouldn't people want to sponsor something that looks professional, but at a minimal cost? And that's how uh, things are in my industry. We make things look effortless. We make things look na it's so easy to do. But in reality, there's a lot of back end. There's a lot of hard work that's involved. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of data checking. There's a lot of making sure the photo that you took looks really nice. It's Instagrammable. And then you have to post your thoughts out there on Twitter just so you know, you cover all bases. And in a way, when you put in all the hard work, eventually people will start to notice and then they will want to put an ad on your site. That's another way for you to earn as a blogger or sponsor your content. So yun yung pinaka basic ways on how you can earn from blogging, which is also the same thing that you can do with live streaming, with video marketing, with vlogging on YouTube. Can, can you give us an example ng, ng event na uh in a spot na in sponsor and guy got paid and everything yes i know but uh to enlighten our viewers of course can you give us like one or two uh parang repeat uh events that you have gone to for like uh two three times now huh i'm not i'm not sure if i can mention the actual brand because you know sometimes we have claws um but uh, industry, na lang. <laughs> industry um tech industry uh -huh. and um so in the tech industry there has been events where i go there i attend and i'm paid to attend the event so that's another way uh it's called an appearance fee so they pay you just for going to the event and then they pay you to post about the event. So it could be an Instagram post, it could be a Facebook post, it could be a Twitter post, and then you also get paid for writing about the event. Now what's great about these is you can still maintain your integrity because you put in your honest opinion about what happened. So ako, one pro tip that I can give is if you really don't like the product, regardless of the pay, do not say yes. Because one of the hardest things to do is write about something that you do not like. So that's um, that's something. I have something for tech that I get invited. I review their phone. I post an honest opinion. I tell people if it's worth buying or not. Um, which type of person, you know, baga yung phone. Because there are some phones, it's meant for kids or for teenagers. And then there are phones that are meant for interior designers. So my job is to tell people hey, is this worth your time, your money, your investment? Or if not, why? Oh, we have a question. Uh, so, Kenny, how do you schedule your posts? Uh, do you post a vlog on a daily basis? Because yung anak niya, he's seven years old, uh, he likes to blog. This question is from Charlotte Lynn. Hi, hello, Charlotte. Um, that's an awesome question. So ideally, if you're blogging for the first time, you should be able to post at least every other day. Um, the reason for that is Google's algorithm uh, reads how, me how much new content you have. So if you post every other day, when Google's bots, uh, they crawl the system, they will see now, oh, it's consistent every other day. There's new material. I'll make sure I crawl this every other day. 
if you post like once a week, then it's harder for Google to recognize that your blog actually exists. Now, if he's, you know, if your child is a kid, I would suggest posting every Friday and Saturday because Friday there's no more school the next day and Saturday they have enough time to gather new materials, research, and then produce content. So they have something to look forward to on the weekends and it becomes a passion project. So they also don't feel pressured. Now, what if they're not able to do that? Do what is comfortable for you until you get to the point where you can do what is necessary to be done so that your, your blog gains traction and followers. But you have to be consistent. You can't post like twice a week, this week or this month, and then next month you become once a week. Because your readers need to know that if they visit you on a certain day, there will be new content. And nothing is more frustrating than going to a blog and seeing that it hasn't been updated in weeks or months. Uh, Pero ano, si, si, uh, Miss Kenny, since you mentioned na, ano, na when you talk about it this way, para it's a lot of work. So based on your experience, once your blog started running and you were getting all these followers, uh, when did you de decide to do uh, blogging full-time, work on it full-time? Um, actually, <laughs> so I was working for uh, I was working for BPO and uh, I wasn't I wasn't healthy because uh, I, I get sick a lot of times and I had a really toxic um, work environment so Ovida was actually one of the few who said why don't you do freelance I said I can't. I've been in the corporate industry for nine years. I'm used to this. And that's so scary. Like, where would you get the money? What if you don't have projects or clients? Kasi a naman, lot of worries. Na, Julia, apat na oras ang commute niya. Huh? Sorry na. Ah, na okay. yeah. <laughs> going to work. Going, going to work. Yeah. Pabalik another four going hours. Going back another four hours. <laughs> So it was really bad. Um, but then, um, as cheesy as it sounds, um, so a lot of people were pressuring me now, you know, you do them on social media very well. Why don't you try it? Why don't you do it? So I prayed. I was like, okay, a lot of people are pushing me. I have the backup of my mom, but it's re really scary because I have a kid. Um, give me a sign. I said, give me a sign if I should stop this. The next day on my way to work, I literally fainted on the street. I woke up in a hospital. Um, parang some patrol guys saw me on the street lying on the on the on the street, and they took me to a hospital. And I woke up like hours later, na. So uh, it was really bad. Um, I was stressed out. I was over fatigued. I had what? really bad health conditions. So I said, okay, I get it. It's a billboard. Hindi sign yung binigay mo. It's a billboard. <laughs> I need to I need to give a uh, freelance a try. But I gave a deadline to myself. I said, if in six months, nothing happens, I go back to corporate. Because, you know, you have to be realistic as well. And I guess I was lucky and... Topic, wait. Nako, mukhang... Kaya ni mukhang nag-pause ka. Wala pa to our feed. Ano lang. Our our producer is on it. Yeah, Ayun. the portal. Yes, sorry. Okay. Yes, you're back. Okay, great. What was the last thing that you guys um you know it happens when live shows? <laughs> oh, After the billboard. Oh, <laughs> uh, billboard, billboard. Oh, uh, okay. So billboard. Um, so I I re resigned from my corporate job, and then within two weeks, naman, I got my first two clients for social media. And the rest is history. And now I'm here six years, five years later. Oh, <laughs> uh, five, years, five years. It's been five years turning six years that I've been doing freelance work full time. So I've been earning from my blog um, and I've been earning from writing full time. Wow. Diba, guys? Kaya, kaya talaga. Uh, you can have... Uh, 
not just ano, hindi, 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 ano, what you earn from freelancing is not a pittance. You can really earn well through freelancing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Actually, um, to give you guys uh, uh, an insider um, scoop, when I was working uh, for a corporate job, I could never pay the tuition fee in full. Like, it's always tingi, I'd always do installment, I'd always struggle. And I had, ano, I had a monthly salary. And then I did freelance. And on my second year of doing freelance, until now, thank God, I've been able to pay the tuition fee of my son in full. Oh, I know. Oh, I, I know what you mean. Ano rin eh, kami rin ng husband ko, we've been... Actually, kinokobit nga namin, yung na-save pa lang namin sa commute. Pag tuition na yun eh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's actually you can earn from freelance, but you have to be um, masipag. You can't just you know expect projects to fall on your lap. It doesn't happen that way. You really have to network, build your portfolio. Kailangan mo siyang paghirapan. Pero kapag pinaghirapan mo naman, may maaani ka. Mm-mm. That's true, diba? So guys, can you always hustle? hindi porket may permanent position na siya ngayon, may full-time work ka, eh, pinapabayaan na niya yung kanyang other streams of income. Tuloy-tuloy yan. Ano yung, kung ano yung, baka at ano yung kayang gawin. Pasukan. And, oh, oh, and you have niya. to, ano, you have to really love your clients or the, the brand or the company that you're working for. Kasi, it's so easy to be lazy eh, when you're doing freelance. Like, if you're just writing from home, but it's so easy to just not do anything, to just lie down and to procrastinate like crazy. But if you actually treat your clients more, the the company that you work for as something a legitimate parang corporate job, but you know you you're at the comfort of your home, you don't need to um, endure ads of traffic, and you need to always remember that uh, you have to be grateful for the small things. Then you will end up doing better for what you're working on, and then guess what happens. Pwede kang i-refer sa iba. Or, you know, other people will see, uy, magandang work ethics nga. Uy, um, nagbibigay siya ng added value. I want to work with that person. And I've had a lot of projects that were referrals of people that I met lang, people who have heard about me, people that I met by chance. And they would always say, oh, I recommended you to someone because they're looking for this. And I would ask, oh, bakit mo ako recommend Like, you don't know naman how I do uh, my job and they go oh we've seen you we've been observing so you know um what you do there's always looking and you have to always remember that especially as a freelancer because hindi naman porket freelancer hindi tayo professional the more we should be professional di ba? Mm-hmm. yeah because it's your own business eh? you're your own brand exactly and um when you work for companies there's always someone checking on freelancer we check ourselves, we monitor ourselves, we need to always update ourselves, and we need to always stay on top of everything so that when a new opportunity lands, you're ready for it. Kasi diba, mahirap yung pagbagsak ng opportunity, doon ka pala magre-ready. May nauna na sa'yo. Too late na. Oo oh, nga, no? Hmm. I heard that somewhere. So- I wish it was from me. <laughs> <laughs> So, ngayon ang usong, ano, ang usong buzzword sa social media is being an influencer, influencing others to act, to buy but that brand, to buy out that brand. So, uh, what, uh, influ- <laughs> do you consider yourself as an influencer? <laughs> That's my first question. And what does it take to be an influencer? Ako, honestly, I don't see myself as an influencer. Um, well, there's been it's been proven that I do. That's why I've also learned to be careful about what I post, what I say, what I rant about. Because I realize that when you're out there, when you put yourself out there, when you blog, you uh, tweet, you post things online, there are people looking and there are people looking at up at you and i realized this when i've had a couple of kids tell me i want to be like you when i grow up which was like so much pressure you guys had that reaction my reaction was fear i was like 
why? Why do you want to be like me? No, you could be like a doctor or something. But I feel like, oh, I I have uh, an influence on these kids. I need to make sure that it's a good form of influence. Um, what does it take to be an influencer? Do you want the the hype or the perceived one? The perceived one because is you have a number of followers, you look good all the time, Both. you travel uh, all, uh, all the time. <laughs> you call it, oh, influencer sha. But for me, ah, the real influencers are the ones who actually walk the talk. So if they say they're into health and travel and uh, and fitness, they actually do that. You'd see there's proof that they do fitness, they work out, they eat right. Hindi yung porque they were sponsored lang by a cereal brand. They post about it, and then when you see them in person, all they eat is fries, nothing else. So you kind of question. So to be an influencer, you need to walk the talk. You need to have integrity because if you're endorsing a certain burger. And then the next day, you're endorsing another burger. Parang, how will people know which one you really like? So you have to make sure that what you say, you can keep your word. And then another is, when you're an influencer, you're mindful of what you put out in the world. Because you can actually affect jobs. You can affect people's lives. You can change someone's mood. And you have to be responsible for that. Diba parang sabi nga nila sa Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. When you're an influencer, regardless if you're a nano-influencer and you have 1,000 to 10,000 followers, if you're a micro-influencer or you're a full-time ambassador, you have to remember that what you say affects someone. And you need to be careful of that. I think when you know these things and you are mindful of these things, that's when you become an effective influencer. Hindi siya ano lang. Hindi siya nag-photoshoot ako sa ganito. Hinashtag ko na ganyan. May 1,000 na nag-like. Influencer na ako. That's a very superficial um, way of looking at it. But when you bring out things and you make changes for the better and you impose it on your uh, audience and you tell them that, hey, let's save the planet and let's really do this, then you're influencing for the right reason and the right way. For me, that's when you become a true blue influencer. You don't need uh, millions of followers. You just need to affect a certain number and ask those people to also, parang pass, uh, pay it forward. Uh -huh. And ano nga eh, yung parang di ba, uh, I think sort of naging horrors, uh, influencer horror story na yung Fire Festival, di ba? Oh, yeah. They got a bunch of influencers. And ano, ang daming, ang daming, it was basically a scam. And I know, and it's good, Miss Kenny, that you pointed it out. You have to walk the talk. You have to be ethical when you're an influencer. Kasi, ano eh, pera at buhay ng ibang tao yung binibigay sa'yo eh. So, you have to be conscious about that. Yeah, and especially like when influencers rant on social media, you have to remember that when they rant, there's a possibility that someone could lose their job because of that rant. That a business could Kardashian? actually shut down. Si diba? Nag, nag, ano siya sa Snapchat? Nag rant siya. Ano ba to Snapchat? Snapchat. And then... Oh, uh, and then well, Snapchat's um, stock market price went down. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. They lost yeah. billions in So, in you value. affect a lot of things. Exactly. So, you have to be really mindful. Ako, I learned that the hard way. I ranted about a brand before. And then, but for me, I was just really upset. Wala kong any other intention. I didn't even mention the name of the brand. And then I realized it actually reached the brand. And the person that I was talking about was suspended. And I felt really bad because that wasn't my intention. I was just parang blowing off steam. But I realized that if you have a certain number of following or if people look up to you a certain way, you really need to be careful because you could really change someone's life. And sometimes it's not for the better. Uh -uh. Um, Miss Kenny, I mean, I know it's amazing that you've, you've done this for 13 years. So what what were the challenges that you encountered? Uh, siguro part na rin yun sa for aspiring bloggers. What challenges can they expect when you follow this path of being a full-time blogger or influencer? Mm. Okay, challenges. The creation of content. 
So there are days where creation of content is so easy, you can get things done in an hour and you're good to go. There will be times that it will take you days. There will be moments where you will question if you're even a writer, um, if you're, what you're doing oh, yeah. is good enough. And then when you have the bashers, you're gonna question everything oh. else and why you're even there. So those are the things that you need to look out for. The others is you could write a really awesome article and then the client will say, I don't like this, do it again. Mm -hmm. And you need to, you know, you need to reel in your ego and follow what the client says. So, you know, we have to admit, writers, we writers, our ego is very fragile that when we do our work and then it gets cut down, you feel like it's a personal attack. But you need to understand this is work. This is not personal. And sometimes the client just doesn't like how you wrote things because they have a certain idea. Other challenges are if you do become an influencer, always remember, beloved ang mundo, you are never going to be on top all the time. So pwedeng today, sikat ka, everyone loves you, and then the next day, everyone forgot about you. But you cannot give up on this if this is what you really want. Some people say they try and they try and they think within six months sikat na ako, kilala na ako. i'd have a lot of projects but you know sometimes it takes a lot of hard work it takes years and then suddenly oh i'm relevant people want to work with me so you know you have to strike while the iron is hot but again consistency is really key in everything you can't be swayed by the numbers you can't be swayed by the number of readers or the number of non-readers because sometimes you have this really great article and you're so proud of it and only a hundred people read it and then you posted something that you didn't really thought much about parang, ah, okay lang. and then guess what hundred thousand views <laughs> and you go crazy now wait lang. i worked so hard on this <laughs> one why this and you get frustrated but you have to remember mm -hmm. People are very fickle-minded. You are yes. not everyone's cup of tea. What you think is great could be not so great for other people. So you have to balance everything. Eh? The main thing that will kill you as a blogger will always be yourself. Your ego, your perspective, your opinion. When you start questioning yourself, so you always have to remember, why am I doing this? Why did I become a freelancer? Why did I choose to be a blogger? Why did I choose to do live streaming? When people start hating on you, you have to always, you know, hold on to that reason that you even started doing the thing that you're doing right now. So how do you deal with uh, with competition? Tama nga, maliit ang mundo ng blogging. Eh. <laughs> so maraming, marami na rin magsasabing, ah, I'm also a blogger. So instead of hiring her, hire me. Mga ganun na masabi. Um, for me, uh, I think you have to constantly, um, what do you call that? Uh, reform yung, babagoy mo sarili mo. Transform yourself into something new. Parang si Lady Gaga, di ba? Laging bago, laging something new. You always have to learn new things and uh, stay updated. That's one. That's how you stay on top of the competition. Two, you need to remember this. And please, do not forget this. There will always be someone better than you. Mm -hmm. yeah. There will yeah. always be someone better with yourself. You just have to aim to be better than who you were yesterday. So yes. today you learn something new, that's good. Tomorrow, learn something new again. The next day, gano lang, ulit ulitin mo. Then that's how you maintain um, being on top of the game, even if there are a thousand new blocks. So you have an advantage. Uh, take, 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 make use of that already. You've had years. Yes, they're new. They're younger. Guess what? I have tenure. I have more experience. I've I've been driven out of an event and survived it. So you so have to. Make, what happened? <laughs> so you know you just have to take all of your experiences and keep elevating yourself to something new, learning new things. And that's how you will be able to show people that, hey, I may be old, I may be um, old in this industry, but guess what? I'm still relevant. 
And you know why? Because I am old in this industry, I already know how everything works. And I also know how the new stuff works. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Kasi, and, and eh, parang because, because you really have to be, be better than you are yesterday. Kasi it's useless then, diba, to look at your competition. If you go to focus on your competition, you'll be just paralyzed by the fear. So actually, you can also look at your competition. You study them, find out what they don't have, and then aral mo so that you have that advantage. Ah, oo. Yun. Maganda. Ako yeah, kung lakad natin magstock, Julia. Oo, <laughs> eh, nagpaparamdam na sila eh. So parang okay lang yun. Let's stop okay, na natin okay. sila. Oh, saka nag-improve naman tayo every day. Diba dati hindi tayo nagsusuklay? <laughs> <laughs> Mga first few episodes na may Miss Kenny, wala kami oh, siya isuklay. Woke up like this talaga. Nag-make up lang ako for this. Nag-make up ako for this. Ano, magandi kasi yun, yun din ang ano, yun ang promise sa amin sa sarili. Like, we're gonna do this because it's fun, but it has to be better than the last episode talaga lagi. Yeah. So, para para feeling namin, ay, maganda yung last episode what we can do better. Ayun, exactly. So, oh, Ma'am Kenny, kasi parang iniisip ng mga tao na madaling magsimula maging vlogger, di ba? But how do they really, if you, parang sabi na, seri- seryoso ako, gusto ko maging vlogger. So, where do you start if you want to be a serious vlogger? Actually, agree ako. Mabilis mag-start ng vlog. Get cover, oh, yeah. <laughs> get WordPress, have a title, set up your team, design. Sobrang bilis. Like, it can be done in less than an hour. But how to I stay a vlogger, like... you know, <laughs> ah, yun yung yun yun. part. Diba? Kasi I have four blogs. Guess what? <laughs> Wala ako na si Kaso sa kanila lahat. <laughs> yun yun. Um, how do you stay being a blogger? It's like being in a relationship. Mabilis yung likawan, mabilis ma in love. But how do you stay and maintain the relationship? It's the same with blogging. Again, it requires dedication. It requires a lot of hard work. It requires consistency. So if you really want to be a serious blogger, I would ask you, what do you want to read about? Then that's what you write about. So it's easier for you. Because if there's there are things that you want to read about, when you do research on those items, matutuwa ka eh. Because these are the things that I'm interested in. So these are the things that I'm going to write about. Because mm-hmm. it's possible that with the millions of blogs out there, the one thing that you're asking yourself, nobody has been able to answer. So it would be great if you can provide that. Because guess what? Your question or the, the missing part could be something that other people are also looking for. So it's unique to you. And then there's a niche out there. There's always a niche for everything out there. I mean, if cat videos and dog videos are the most trending thing, we have to believe that there's always a niche for every single crazy idea out there. And that could be your crazy idea, but you need to be consistent. So, mabilis maging blogger, mahirap magstay as a blogger kasi actually have to do work. But, but if you love what you're doing, it won't feel like work. It'll feel like nagikipagkwentuhan ka lang, nag update ka lang about the things that you love. And then, you know, you promote it. You tell people, hey, I wrote this. I wrote that. Baka gusto mong basahin. Baka gusto mong i-share. Alam mo, yung parang same lang na nagkukwento ka. Tapos sinabi mo, uy, alam mo ba, nagpunta ako dito. Ginawa ko to. But in the form of a blog. Or a vlog. Or a live stream. So it's the same. You treat it as something that you care about, that you love. And then, it'll be easy to stay as a blogger. So what platforms do the do bloggers use right now? I mean, they're not only bloggers, they're also uh, they also do videos, they also do social media. So what are the most common that they use and they earn from? Uh, most common kasi with for bloggers uh, is WordPress nowadays. Now I'm not on WordPress because I'm on Blogspot cuz I started 13 years ago and, you know, I didn't want to change into something else. But most bloggers nowadays, they start with WordPress and then they have an actual blog, which is like a website with all their articles. But the other um, more popular platform 
would be Instagram. This is where the nano influencers or micro influencers are because they can micro blog. Um, since micro blog has become a thing where they write a short sentence or short paragraph to describe the event that they were at or to mm -hmm. share their thoughts. So that's another way for you to earn. Now we also have Twitter where a lot of people express their opinion and some brands would also pay you to tweet about their event, to tweet about their product. So it's one of the fastest ways to earn when you already have a clout, so to speak. So kasi pag on Twitter, they have a certain number of followers that they require. So if you don't reach that certain minimum number required, they're not going to consider you for the project. And it's a lot harder because with Twitter being so spontaneous and so, you know, fast and how it changes, they need really high numbers. Now for the others, mm -hmm. like with YouTube or live stream, it's a totally different um, thing as well. Because this one would require for, you know, FaceTime, you have to fix yourself, you have to edit. But those are the platforms where a lot of bloggers can actually make money from. Those are your options. Other way to becoming LinkedIn Live. I know that a lot of people think that LinkedIn is no longer a thing. Guess what? You guys are wrong. LinkedIn is very oh, much cool. alive and they're getting into live streaming. And if yes. you are a freelancer right now, my number one pro tip for you, video marketing is the best way to go. So if you can get into live streaming, get into live streaming because that's going to be the next big <laughs> um, project. There's going to be the demand. <laughs> Kailangan na si promote yung ating LinkedIn page. Oo. Hindi. Ano ba din? Listen Live streaming will be the, the next big thing for a lot of brands, a lot of companies. It will be all about video marketing and people will want to see authenticity, realness, being able to think on your feet, being able to answer questions posted real time. People don't want to wait eh. They just want answers ASAP. And you know, when you live stream, you see the questions, you get to answer it real time. There's a lot of engagement. That's what we actually uh, do at BeLive. We help the live streamers because as mentioned, live streaming or video marketing is really going to be the next big thing. Actually, napapansin ko na yan sa mga bags. Uh, a lot of online sellers Instead yeah. of just posting their bags uh, marketplace, they do uh, they do live stream and mm -hmm. in China, uh, there's this uh, uh, well he started as a blog uh, as a blogger and then eventually formed his own company na na dadala ng, 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 uh, he's the foremost luxury uh, luxury bag guru in in China. Oh, yeah, so yeah, my heard of it. Uh, uh, Bao Bao, I think they call him Mr. Bao Bao, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. then, yun, yun, uh, he live streams via WeChat. Because so WeChat mm -hmm. is a platform in China. You can also sell there. And you can also, I know, uh, you can chat, you can video, then you can sell. So, dun, ano, live streaming na. As in, stream ya lang. Uh -oh. 10 minutes sold out. <laughs> I know so people see the product. Diba? That's one of the things that we don't like about online sellers eh, or online shops. We can't see the product. But now, the moment that they actually put it on camera and they show you, you're more inclined to, oh, I, I need to have that. Because you uh -oh. saw the product. Eh, but you're still at the comfort of your home. <laughs> product. <laughs> Ay, ano na eh um, may, may isa nga rin akong nakita ano, um, uh, I forgot anong clothing FB marketplace lang nga siya eh. uh, uh -huh. she sells clothes pero nag FB live siya once a week may, may hinahatak siya mga models tapos parang ang ano niya is if you order during the live, uh, FB live stream may discount ka on the yeah. clothing tapos uh -huh. ano lang yung parang Parang the model, just ano, parang pangalan, uh -huh. uh, name, and the type of dress. So, kung, as in, ang bilis na, ano, we, uh, I watched it one time. Ang bilis, pasok ng pasok lang kaagad yung order. Parang tanong lang kaagad, what size? Kasi ang, ang, ano, ang galing niya doon. Kasi ang, ang laki rin ng discount oh. na 
nilagay niya pero during the live stream lang after hmm. that regular prices so, wow galing diba? because it's very instantaneous eh. and again people want you know instant gratification so live stream gives you that um, that feeling of gratification agad agad you have a question it gets answered immediately i'm sure you've all felt this way you were interested in the product you left a comment four days later still no response parang if you do live streaming you um tell them about your product about your show about your services they have a question you answer them they can immediately make a choice make a decision to say yes or no Oo. Kaya ba laki nang kita ng razor headphones ngayon dahil sa amin eh. We should get sponsorship from them to be honest. Yes, you can also Uh-oh. ask them, di ba, to sponsor you. <laughs> yeah, because every episode, uh-huh. maraming nagtatanong. <laughs> Ay, uh-huh. Sinama ko yung mouse ng husband uh-huh. ko na ano, razor. Ay, uh-huh. Ay Miss Kenny, ano, since you mentioned investment, parang ano lang, should, um, uh, one question, should you buy a domain immediately? Like, if you're, if you're going to go through the, if you're going to go through the blogging route, not, ano, you're gonna have your own website, should, should the blogger buy their domain kaagad, or, ano, build an audience when they're using a free, ano, free domain? It's a very tricky question because it's yes and no. Yes, if you're a hundred percent sure that this is a path you want to take. Why? Um, if you wait until a certain time, all of the all of the mileage that you've actually established using the non-domain uh, URL, it goes back to zero the moment you buy a domain. So sayang yung effort mo, sayang yung hard work mo mawawala lahat ng DA mo, PA, um, crawling, kasi it's a completely new URL, and it's gonna be like an infant na, back to zero tayo, mm-hmm. and then we have to grow again. But if you're not yet sure, if you're 50-50, do not buy a domain yet, kasi oh, okay. you might buy it. Or I would say buy one, and buy it for a year. And then when you're really sure na, that's when you buy it for the next 10 years, para secured na yung URL sa'yo. But if you're not yet sure, since hindi naman din ganun kamahal buying a URL nowadays, and buy are... one and buy it for a year. So mm, one, okay. you're more professional and more legit. And a lot of brands, you know, prefer to work with .coms kesa sa parang vida.wordpress.com. Di ba parang eh? And it sounds better, vida.com. When you introduce yourself, when you tell people about your site, you just seem more legitimate, more professional when you actually have your own domain. Yeah. Uh, kanina na mention natin ng tungkol sa competition and when mm-hmm. you become a big influencer, eh, there's a really big chance of being bashed. I know from our countless stories na maraming, ano, maraming nang, ano, naka- yes, <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> We're backstabbing, frontstabbing, side and everywhere, diba? So, how do you, yes, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? How do you, uh, what tips can you, uh, can you give on how to cope with all the negativity and all the, uh, all the bashing online that you will be getting? Uh, whether you're, especially when you're famous now, or well, you're more well known. Well, uh, uh, initially, how I used to handle it was I would cry. Oh, <laughs> I yes. would cry. <laughs> As in, I'd see a really mean comment and I'd cry. I'd question my life's existence. Bahat galit sa kantong taong to anong ginawa ko? What could I change? As in, I would question everything. And I would cry and just feel really bad. But then, eventually you realize there are people in this world who live just to be mean to someone else. And it's mm-hmm. not because there's something wrong with you. It's because there's something wrong with them. Because, you know, good people do not wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to crush someone today. It's only the miserable ones. Kasi nga, misery loves company, so they feel bad, they want to make you feel bad, and if you let them make you feel bad, talo ka. So, how do you handle it? 
Now, let's be clear. Ah. It's normal to feel hurt. It's normal to feel bad. It's okay to cry. Just do not cry in public. Do not post that you're crying. Do not tell the world na ang sama, sama ng loob mo. Because when you do, you're feeding the trolls. You're feeding these negative people. Kasi, ah, oh, affected siya. I'm gonna hurt this person more. So what can you do? If you need to rant, rant to family and friends. Offline. Do not rant to family and friends. Make it a Facebook status. Mommy, daddy, na hurt ako. Diba? People don't need to know that you're feeling miserable or that you were hurt. Because guess what? Most people will not care. Sad reality, but most people will not care. So rant offline to people that you trust. But after you rant, after you cry, after you feel hurt, get up. And always remember, it is not you. It is them that has a problem. Now, two, take it as constructive criticism. Baka nga naman yung pinagpipilita mong outfit, hindi talaga bumagay sa'yo. So learn to differentiate between criticism that could help you and yung mga troll lang na wala magawa sa buhay. Pag wala talaga magawa, they're not adding any value. Disregard. But the ones who are giving you feedback, learn from it because it will make you better. And we always want to constantly be better. Now, the last part is ignore them. Because bullies or trolls, they feed on attention. When you ignore them, when you don't pay attention, they will eventually stop. They, it may take some time, but they will always stop when you don't engage. So if somebody bashes you, somebody backstabs you, just ignore them because one, you owe it to yourself to surround yourself with positivity. Kung magagalit ka, mahahurt ka lang na mahahurt, guess what? Sinong nahihirapan? Ikaw. The troll, super happy kasi nakikita niya, ha, miserable na siya, ha, affected siya, ha, magagalit siya, oh. But when you ignore, di ba they feel like, oh, okay, I don't matter pala talaga. They, they might attack you again, but if you again ignore and do not engage, Eventually, they'll stop and look for somewhere else na they can inflict more pain. Kasi ikaw, you're not allowing it to happen eh. So they're gonna stop. They will always stop. And I mean, Vida knows this. I had a basher who literally went through my entire life existence. And then nilait niya ako mula pagkabata ko hanggang sa current age ko. And this person actually messaged everyone who was close to me. Ganun ka, ganun ka tindi yung hatred niya for whatever reason. But I did not engage. I told them to not engage. And the person eventually stopped. Because they will only feed on attention. And if you don't give it to them, they will work um, somewhere else. And also, shouldn't you be creating awesome content that you won't have time for the bashers? Yeah. Oh, yung basher na yun binasa lahat ng kanyang blog entry. So by that time, ilan na? More than 500. <laughs> but uh, also, ito, also ito, I, I learned this yesterday. If somebody bashes you, sabi nga nila, you've made it. Kasi you're worthy of attention. And if they leave comments, you know, if, if you really want to engage, just say thank you. Why? They actually viewed your blog. They mm -hmm. actually watched your video. They actually made time to check on you. Thank them. That's engagement. That's views. That's numbers. <laughs> 500. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> so, just, you know, thank them. In the, I don't know, you didn't waste your time. They wasted their time. So, parang, thank you for your time. The bag is 500 clicks. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> diba? or more. The body stayed on my site to read. So that, that's good for the algorithm of my site. Now, <laughs> kung may nagbababad para magbasa lang, diba? And it means yeah. you matter to them, but they shouldn't matter to, to you. But, um, when uh, let's segue to brands paano kung say uh of course if your brand is yourself or you're endorsing a brand and and uh, the 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 comments the bashing uh, is starting to affect your reputation more and the reputation of the brands that you're endorsing pag ganun yung situation you know what i learned um 
it means that they're not the right brand for you. Because um, I've had a lot mm -hmm. of haters before, and it has affected some brands. But you know, the right brand, the brand that actually works with you and actually works for you and is in line with your principles and what you believe in and what you're preaching, they will still come. And the ones that actually went away, you will realize it wasn't a match to begin with. Eh? There would be issues, there would be hindrances that you didn't see at that time. But when you look back, ah, kaya pala nawala tong brand na to. Hindi din naman pala kami pareho ng ideologies. So the right brand will always work its uh, work its way to you. They will always partner with you because the right brands will not just be affected or swayed by a, a few mean um, comments. They will investigate. They will find out because they know that, you know, everyone has a hater. If, you know, the Pope has a hater and Mother Teresa has a hater, Claro na tayong mga normal na tao, di ba? But they will see, they will be able to see beyond the mean comments. They will be able to check your integrity, your work ethics, the the media mileage that you put out. And then they will honor that and respect that. And they will still want to work with you. Okay. So, ano yan eh, huwag mong panghinayangan yung mga nawala. Kasi yung dapat na para sa'yo, darating at darating. Parang pag-ibig yun, ano? Parang hindi siya. Hugot na! And it's the same. It's the same with everything. Kasi diba, it's all relationships. So, um, if people, you know, just drop you because they saw mean comments, trolls, and everything, then they don't value you. But the ones who actually value you, value your work, value the time and effort that you put in, they will stay. And they will want to work with you because they know you're worth investing in. Oh. Ano, um, Miss Kenny, I, I just want to acknowledge it. Ang dami niyo pong fans. Oh, na, ano na touch kami. Salamat po. And ano, sala, uh, <laughs> ano, grabe. Ma, ano, si, si Mr. Christian Peña. Ang may, mm -hmm. ano. Si, uh, Sabi rate, niya, uh, idol ka oh, niya. Oo. Oh, oh. Hello. Sa, and si Niza, Niza uh, Ilaya Zanoria. Oh, Ate Kathy, can you yan, no? <laughs> so, ano, uh, so Miss Kenny, ano po, uh, what are your future plans? Where, ano, if people want to see you, more of ah, you. Okay. Can, <laughs> um, okay, so I have um upcoming uh, event, so please stay tuned on the blog. It's www.lifeiskulayful.com. On social media, I'm Miss Kathy Kenny. Um, right now, I work with BeLive.TV, which is all about live streaming. So if you're a live streamer, please make sure to check out www.BeLive.TV. Hindi siya believe, ah. It's BeLive.TV. Um, so that's where I'm at. But I'm also going to be a speaker for um, some influencer boot camp and in schools to talk about live streaming and why everyone wow. needs to get it the live streaming so um please watch out for that i do have a facebook page it's um life is cool i feel yeah, miss that i'm link everything down below and um if you're yep. bored and you have nothing to do you can and please share i really really love reading comments and i would um, love more than nothing to you know talk with you guys and if you need advice um to the vas watch Feel free to reach out. I will make it a point to answer all your questions. Uh -oh. So, uh, guys, uh, the links to Miss Kenny's uh, Facebook page and to be live are, ano, in the in the video description. And Miss Kenny, hindi na lang po kami siguro ng link for your uh, influencer bootcamp and events para isama natin sa sa video description yes. so people who who want to <laughs> attend can go. Yes. Yeah, I will go ahead and do that. Yeah. For some uh, for some of our VAs, for a lot of you, uh, if you're not a blogger, vlogger, or influencer, there's a big chance that your client is 
So understanding the workings, the behind the scenes, uh, katulad ng mga tips na binigay sa atin ni Kenny, would help you understand your client's business better. Mm-hmm. So bakit siya super, bakit siya super obsessed sa numbers, sa content niya? Bakit kailangan ganito yung reputation ng ano na yung reputation niya online is because of course uh views and and uh, what do you call this and your sponsorship they 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 come from uh from what you share or what your clients share. And so, it's all about yeah. perception management. Yes. Uh-oh. Yes. And chances are that's your job as well. Yes, Hanapin exactly. Yung... As, as the VA, you need to make sure that everything is in line so that the perception will remain the same all throughout. Um, so, Miss, uh, can you, do you have any uh, closing statements? Any last words? Uh, gusto niyong i-share? Or to Saka isa oras na kila tayo. Oo. Siguro, um, final words ko is, if you want to be a blogger just for the swag and to attend events, you're in the oh wrong God. industry. <laughs> but if you want to be, <laughs> be a blogger because you have information to share with the world and you have stories and passion for writing, then go ahead and pursue it. Um, be dedicated and eventually you will see the fruits of your hard work and there is nothing sweeter than being invited over the person wants you to review because they hello hello na po talulit tayo <laughs> ah okay ayun so can you ano? still there Ayun. Well, ayun. Oh. What na, well, na ano si Miss Kenny? Oh, oh she's back. Well, Hopefully. Okay. But ayun guys, uh while we're waiting for Kenny and her tips, uh next week we will be having our own <laughs> We will be having our own producer. Makikita niyo na siya sa camera. Oo. Kasi kailangan maging techy. So, ano, VA Divo muna buka, uh, for the next week. Hindi VA Diva. So, may isang di- Diva and Divo tayo for next week. So, <laughs> Kasi marami na tatanong po niyo, ano bang klaseng PC ang kailangan para review ano pag pag nag VA ako so anong kailangan ko bilhin ano brand ng ano anong specs ng computer ko anong specs ng laptop ko anong software nandoon so para masagot ang inyong mga katanungan and you have to stay tuned we will have uh, husband dear ni Julia <laughs> Ayun. So guys, ano, um to see more of Miss ano, Miss Kenny, uh, uh, we have the links in the video description and we will contact her again para yung links to her events, to her to her blog and to be live nandiyan lang din sa description. We will include them uh, later and also on our YouTube page. So for more ano for for more videos like this, please subscribe to our page and to our YouTube account and PMS, uh, PMS, <laughs> PM us for topic yeah. suggestions. And uh, if you want, uh, if you're an experienced VA, and if you want a guest or I know if you want uh, there are topics you want to share, please PM us and leave comments. If you have questions, and indeed, this yeah. is good now, guests, we will try to answer them below. Yes. Sabi nga ni Kenny, uh, she's always uh, open to questions. So, uh, hello po. Paano magpa-mentor? Uh, that's kind of a uh, difficult question to answer. Uh, kasi, uh, guys, may mga full-time jobs kami. And yes, we do this for fun. But uh, we also have a lot on our plate. So, uh, that's why we create content like this. Para pwede mm-hmm. niyong balikan at your own time. So, like we always say, Julia, Google is your friend. Google is your friend. And, ano, 
search tab sa mga pages namin, sa mga group pages natin. DVAA, oh. Davao, Philvan. Marami dyan. Maraming mga, ano, maraming free content that you can access, find out your niche, and, uh, and study. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me, may exam ako sa Friday dito. <laughs> Ako kailangan ko yung mag-aaral. So, ayan guys, ha? Nag-upskill na. kami, o. Oh, si kami ni Julia, nag-upskill kami. And ako, I have to pass an exam on pivot tables, which I have no clue. And I have 24 hours to understand them. <laughs> Ayun. Sige, sige guys, mag-ano muna kami, ha? Mag-ahanap buhay muna kami. Sa yes. Salamat po sa lahat ng nanood. Thank you so much for yes. Thank you so much for viewing, for, for for watching with us and staying up late. Salamat. Sige, good night, everybody. On behalf of the whole team, bye bye. See you next week. <laughs>